Diana DiZaglio served three terms in the State House of Representatives before becoming a state senator in 2019, representing Haverhill, Newburyport, Amesbury, Merrimack, North Andover, Salisbury, and her hometown of Methuen since. Senator, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Great to be here with you, Jim. Why are you interested in this job? It's sort of an under-the-radar kind of thing. Why are you interested in it? Yeah, look, uh, I'm running to make sure that working families like yours get access to and accountability from our state leaders and our state agencies, regardless of your family background, bank balance, or zip code. Born to a 17-year-old single mom, I grew up housing insecure, cleaned houses, and waitressed my way through community college. And I earned scholarships to Wellesley College to become the first in my family to graduate. So I understand that without the investments of others, I would not have had the opportunities I did. And I also know how important it is that our investments made through your tax dollars are spent wisely because every wasted dollar puts another child's future opportunities at risk. And we know there are enough barriers to access. State government shouldn't be one of them. Last week, I rolled out my social justice and equity audit plan alongside of colleagues in the state Senate. And I uh, would love to discuss that audit plan with you today, amongst other things that you might have questions about. Well, Thanks. let's go to that. Uh, you are, uh, you have mentioned a couple of things, at least, that would expand what has traditionally been part of the auditor's purview. Describe that social equity and justice plan first, briefly, if you can. Look, Massachusetts is great at making progressive promises, but too often it fails to actually live up to those ideals. And again, growing up in Lawrence and Methuen, I saw firsthand the disproportionate impacts of unfair policies on underserved communities. Our policies currently feed a self-sustaining status quo where people with generational access to power prosper, their friends who look and sound like them are rewarded and the most vulnerable people are pushed aside and marginalized. I'll be an auditor who opens state government to everyone and shifts the balance of power back to working people. Again, last week I rolled out my social justice and equity audit plan that seeks to look at things uh, anywhere from making sure our government contracts are diverse and our diversity commitments are being meant to make sure to making sure that we are continuing to follow up on EEC uh, and make sure that early intervention and early education is actually uh, fair and equitable across the board, uh, all the way to making sure that affordable housing is equitable here in Massachusetts and that we're not abusing taxpayer funded non-disclosure agreements. Senator, second thing that I noticed on your list of let's call it non-traditional functions. And in this area, you and Chris Dempsey appear to be talking about similar things. Uh, the role for the auditor in controlling climate change. What specifically would you as auditor do on that front? Yes, yeah, so I would like to specifically uh, make sure that mass saves is actually being implemented in an equitable fashion across our communities. I can tell you that as a senator, uh, I've seen some disproportionate actions taken uh, by Mass Save, or I should say, I've seen some inequities in the distribution of the programs that they actually offer, where they seem to benefit wealthier communities while low-income neighborhoods are overlooked and ignored. There should be accountability in ensuring equitable access to the program for underserved communities, as their stated goal is to make sure that residents and businesses across Massachusetts save money and energy uh, in order to lead to a clean and energy efficient future. Uh, so I'll analyze and report on disparities between services provided to low income residents and underserved communities in, in, and residents in more affluent communities. Also, Jim, I wanna take a look at uh, you know whether or not we're actually meeting our climate goals based on what we've passed through the legislature. As a senator, I voted for an act creating a next generation roadmap for Massachusetts climate policy. But what we're hearing is that the administration is dragging its heels on implementing some of the changes that we proposed in that bill. So I'm going to be auditing uh, agencies such as the Department of Public Utilities and making sure that we're actually implementing the changes uh, that we passed in this administration. Having taken on Columbia Gas, uh, look, as a legislator during the Merrimack Valley gas explosions, yeah. I can tell you that we need increased accountability across the board uh, when it comes to making sure that we have clean energy initiatives. Senator, what in your experience uh, do you think is most relevant to the function you'd perform as auditor? So I have been, uh, this is my 10th year in the state legislature speaking truth to power up on Beacon Hill. I have led the charge on transparency and accountability initiatives 
in the state Senate and also in the House of Representatives. I've gone toe to toe with the governor on issues of equity, transparency and accountability, along with even uh, the former Speaker of the House and my own leadership team when need be to make sure that we are actually uh, defending your tax dollars. I've been calling for audits. I've been demanding investigations, but I've been able to be blocked as one out of 40 in the Senate. As your next state auditor, uh, they won't be able to block me anymore. I'll have subpoena authority to get to the bottom of what we need to get to the bottom of, and I will audit and I will investigate the things that I've been calling for audits and investigations on. You've mentioned transparency and accountability. One of my obsessions, which I will broach with you, is that we are the only state in the country, the only state in the country, where the judiciary, the legislature, and the governor's office believe they're exempt from public records laws. What does an auditor de Zaglio do about that? We're not subject to open meeting laws. We're exempt to public records laws. Committee votes are not made public. Taxpayer funded non-disclosure agreements continue to silence government workers. And power continues to be centralized in the hands of a few, Jim. We continue to be ranked by almost every good government group as the least transparent state government in the entire nation. As auditor, I'm gonna do a deep dive into our state agencies including our legislature to analyze the processes and procedures that are taking place that are blocking access for working families into what's really going on behind those closed doors on Beacon Hill. And I'll have the subpoena authority to be able to do that. Only have a couple of seconds left. How would you rate the terms of auditor a bump? I think the auditor bump has done a great job and certainly every auditor has its has their priorities. My priorities are going to be opening up state government and making it accessible to every family in Massachusetts, regardless of their family background, their bank balance, or their zip code. Thanks so much, Jim, for having me on today. Thank you, Senator. It's great to see you. Thanks so much for your time. Great to be back.